Hi, today we're going to be reading one of my favorite Christmas stories, Mickey's Christmas Carol. It was Christmas Eve day, but Ebenezer Scrooge paid no attention as he headed into work. When he arrived, his poor clerk, Bob Cratchit, asked if he could take part of Christmas Day off. I suppose so, grumbled Scrooge. But I'll dock you half a day's pay. Moments later, there was a knock at the counting house door. It was Scrooge's nephew, Fred, coming to wish him a Merry Christmas and to invite him over for Christmas dinner. Bah humbug, Scrooge replied. He did not like Christmas and did not want to join others for Christmas dinner. At the end of the day, as Scrooge arrived home, a ghost appeared in front of him. It was Jacob Marley, his late business partner. The ghost gave Scrooge a warning. Tonight, you will be visited by three spirits. You must change your selfish ways or else you'll end up like me. At midnight, the first spirit arrived. Who are you? asked a frightened Scrooge. I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Come on, Scrooge, it's time to go. The spirit opened the bedroom window and the two flew through the night sky to visit Scrooge's past. The spirit brought Scrooge to a familiar window when they looked inside, they saw Scrooge as a younger, kinder, and happier man who was also in love. But you loved your gold more than anything, the spirit told him. Scrooge couldn't bear to relive his past any longer. Please, spirit, take me home, he cried. Moments later, Scrooge was back in his bedroom, waiting for the second spirit to arrive. A huge shadow fell across his bed. I am the ghost of Christmas present, the spirit announced. We have a long way to travel. Take hold of my rope, we must fly. Soon Scrooge and the spirit were looking through Bob Cratchit's window, watching the family at their Christmas dinner. What is Cratchit doing? Carving a canary? Scrooge asked, looking at their measly meal. What would you expect with the meager wage you pay him? the spirit of Christmas present replied. But the Cratchit house was still filled with joy and warmth that Christmas night. Let's not forget the man who made this feast possible, Bob began, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes, thank you, Mr. Scrooge, Bob's son, Tiny Tim said, and God bless us, everyone. Before Scrooge could say anything else, a cold wind blew him into a graveyard and the spirit of Christmas present had disappeared. The spirit of Christmas future stood in his place and pointed to a freshly dug grave. The spirit of Christmas future told Scrooge that this was his grave and his unattended funeral. No, I don't want my life to end this way. I promise I'll change, Scrooge told the spirit as he thought about all the selfish things he'd done and all the people he'd hurt. In an instant, Scrooge woke up back in his own bed. It's Christmas morning, he cheered. The spirits have given me a second chance. He raced outside and found his nephew Fred. Merry Christmas, Scrooge said, once he'd found him. I'm looking forward to your wonderful meal of yours tonight. Fred was overjoyed he'd finally get to spend a Christmas with his uncle Scrooge. Scrooge went to see the Cratchit family. He brought the whole family Christmas presents and a plump turkey, and he offered to make Bob his new partner. I don't understand, Mr. Scrooge, said an almost speechless Bob. Christmas is a time for giving, Scrooge explained. It is a time to open our hearts and celebrate the joy of the season. Merry Christmas, everyone, and God bless us, everyone.